श्रीमद् भागवत में ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय
translation by the divine relation of Rupa. So thereafter, his father, being afraid of Kamsa, brought him to the cow pastures of Maharaj Nanda. And there he lived for 11 years like a covered flame with his elder brother Baladev. Please repeat. Thereafter, thereafter his father, his his father, father being, afraid of Kamsa, being afraid of Kamsa, brought him to the cow pastures of Maharaj Nanda. And there he lived for 11 years. There was no necessity for lords being dispatched to the house of Nanda Maharaj out of fear of Kamsa's determination to kill him as soon as he appeared. It is the business of Asuras to try to kill Supreme Personality of Godhead or to prove by all means that there is no God or that Krishna is an ordinary human being and not God. Lord Krishna is not affected by such determination of men of Kamsa's class. Mm -hmm. But in order to play the role of a child, he agreed to be carried by his father to the cow pastures of Nanda Maharaj. Because Vasudeva was afraid of Kamsa. Nanda Maharaj was due to receive him as his child. And Ashoda Mai was also to enjoy the childhood pastimes of the Lord. And therefore, to fulfill everyone's desire, he was carried from Mathura to Vrindavan just after his appearance in the prison house of Kamsa. He lived there for 11 years and completed all his fascinating pastimes of childhood, boyhood, and adolescence with his elder brother, Lord Baradev, his first expansion. Vasudeva's thought of protecting Krishna from wrath of Kamsa is part of transcendental relationship. The Lord enjoys more when someone takes him as a subordinate son who needs the protection of a father than he does when someone accepts him as a supreme Lord. He is the father of everyone. He protects everyone, but when his devotee takes it for granted that the Lord is to be protected by devotee's care, it is transcendental joy for the Lord. Thus, when Vasudeva, out of fear of Kamsa, carried him to Vrindavan, the Lord enjoyed it. Otherwise, he had no fear from Kamsa or anyone else. Ariyam Tatsat. Omagyana Timirandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chakshur Nimitam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namah. Shri Chaitanya Mano Vishtam Sapitam Yena Bhutale Svayam Rupa Katamakhyam Dadati Svapadam Tikam. Kam karo ti vacharam pandum nangai te giriam vikripa imaham mande shri guru ninatariam paramananda madam shri chaitanya mishwaram e krishna karuna sindhu dinabandhu jagatpate gopesha gopika kanta radha kanta namostate tattakanchana gaurangi radhe brinda vaneshwari ujjabana sute devi pranamami hari priye Nama Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prishtaya Bhutale Srimate Bhakti Vedanta Swaminiti Namine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pachayane Nirvishesh Shunyavadi Paschatya Deshatarine Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Dharma Shri Vatsadi Gauravarma Pratandha Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Tonanda Vijam Mitaha, Pitra Kamsa, Pipita, Ekadasha, Sastatra, Gudachi, Sabalo Sat. So we continue to hear from Uddhava. Uh, Remembrance about Lord Krishna, especially when triggered by another great devotee, the Vidura. <coughs> so he was overwhelmed with ecstasy in the beginning, but gradually he recovered and he started to compose himself and he was speaking. He went into the remembrance of Lord Krishna. 
started to recollect these great qualities <coughs> in the last uh, previous uh, eight to nine verses. He's been talking about uh, Krishna's great qualities. <coughs> so here he is uh, highlighting one another great quality of Supreme Lord. The how the Lord is ready to even forego his mission temporarily just to satisfy his devotees. So Lord Krishna, as in the previous verse we saw, so Vasudevasya Devakyam Jato Bojendra Bandane Chikirshur Bhagavan Ashriha Sam Ajena Vyajitaha. So Lord Brahma had requested Lord Krishna to advent into this world in order to take care of the disgrace, in order to deal with the the irreligious kings. Mm. So on his request he had come, adventured into the mm. earthly planet to Maharaj Vasudev and Devaki. And he was born in the prison house. So he had all necessary reasons to become angry at Kamsa because he had put his father and mother in the prison house. And besides, he was came for the purpose to kill Kamsa as it was predicted before. But Lord Krishna, he deferred mm. killing Kamsa. Mm. Very reason being, he wanted to satisfy his parents. His parents, mm. <coughs> Vasudeva and Devaki, so they had prayed Lord, uh, Supreme Lord, they had done their austerities, and they had got Krishna as their son for three different mm. lifetimes. But still, when they saw Krishna coming as a four-handed form of Lord Vishnu, but still they were, and then he became a baby Krishna, of course. But they were not very comfortable in having the child face cruel and tyrannical king like Kamsa. So they actually preferred he actually grow up safely in the Raja, far away from the Kamsa's eyesight. So that was their desire. So in order to fulfill that desire, so the Supreme Lord, he deferred killing Kamsa. Mm -hmm. Otherwise there was no reason to wait killing Kamsa. Not let him again reign over this uh, kingdom for another 11 years and commit more atrocities. But he also waited, wanted to wait for the right time so that he, he also wanted to play the pastime of being a small human child. So he didn't want to show himself that he was Supreme Lord as soon as he invented. So he has his own reasons, many reasons. So one of them is definitely to satisfy his father and mother, but he also wanted to play the pastime of a small human boy, so that his blemishless devotees like uh, Nanda Maharaj and uh, Yashoda, and so many residents of Raja, they all can relish their souls pastimes. If he was uh, declaring himself as a uh, Supreme Lord, mm -hmm. and he was killing Kamsa at the very birth, then it would, the fame would just go far and wide, and mm -hmm. Nanda Maharaj and Yashoda would not be able to relish that, that he is a Supreme Lord. There would be their love, blemishless love, their uncontaminated love, would be tinged with an uh, odd reverence. Mm. So that is why, that's another reason why Krishna did not kill Kamsa immediately, but rather he made arrangements through Yoga Maya. So Nanda Maharaj was, uh, he was kind of in an uh, ecstasy, <coughs> carrying the Supreme God on his head. He was not even sure what he was doing to some extent. So he carried forward the Supreme God across the river. He went to the Prajabhumi and he he has not definitely not been there before. He doesn't know the house of Nanda Maharaj. So definitely he was guided by the super soul in the heart. And then he went on to go and uh, exchange the baby Krishna with the baby girl, his uh, sister. So Vaishnavi or uh, Durga Devi. So it is also said by the our Gaudiya Vaishnava Acharyas that uh, Sunanda Maharaj and uh, Ashwada, they had a twins. Mm. So they had 
Lord Krishna and also they had the baby girl together both. That's why she is the sister of Lord Krishna. So when when Vasudeva took the baby Krishna there and he placed near to the two other babies. So these two Krishna became one. And then he carried back the girl baby. So definitely Nanda Maharaj and Ishoda, so they also had Krishna as his son. Mm. And they also definitely experienced all the childhood pastimes. Mm. And so Nanda Maharaj and Vasudeva Devaki also definitely wanted to see those childhood pastimes. And so they, so this happens much later after the Kurukshetra war. So when there is a uh, special, it's a day of solar eclipse, when all of them, both the Rajvasis and the, the Yadus, they all meet up in Kurukshetra in order to perform sacrifices for their forefathers on the day of solar eclipse. So they met up and then they, that time there was a discussion. Krishna Katha between the Prajvasis, they will describe the childhood pastimes of Krishna to the Yadus. And that's why we, we, we have this pastime of Lord Jagannath. Mm -hmm. So Lord Krishna, hearing that, all those wonderful pastimes, although he was not there in, inside, they carefully put both uh, Krishna Balaram outside. And they kept Shubhadra as the guardian so that uh, nobody enters into that uh, Krishna Katha arena. And they posted Shubhadra as the sentry at the gate. But what happened was, uh, it was so intimate and uh, very hard racing pastimes that everybody was lost in the, hearing those pastimes. And they were completely am amazed and dumbstruck. Mm. And including Shubhadra, who was supposed to guard the gate, but she was mm. not guarding the gate. So Krishna and Balram, looking for everybody else, just wandered and then they finally found this place. And they didn't enter into the Yipura arena, but they were there again standing there right by the gate, by the door. And they were also hearing those pastimes, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful pastimes of, of his mm -hmm. childhood pastimes. And they, kind of was, they were also completely dumbstruck, and they were also completely frozen hearing mm -hmm. those pastimes. And that's the form of Lord Jagannath and Baladev and Shubhadra that we worship every day. So this very special Versus, especially in this month of Kartik, when we celebrate the activities of Lord Damodar mm. or Lord Krishna as a baby, it's very special to hear and read this pastime. So that is a very important uh, part of the why Krishna did not kill Kamsa immediately, because his mother and father were very afraid that uh, some harm might come to my son. <coughs> so. Here we see in the last few verses, Krishna's great qualities are being extolled, especially one very celebrated verse is the 23rd verse. Aho bhakiyam stanakala kutam jikam shayapayat api asadvi lebe gatim datri uchitam tatonyam kamva dayalum sharanam rajema. So here, <coughs> Otherwise saying, is there anybody who is more merciful than Krishna? Can anybody be more merciful? So the demoness Putana, who is also sister of Bakasura, which is called Baki, Aho Baki Yam. So she had come to kill Krishna and she put a poison on her breast. But she came to Krishna, but when she saw Krishna, definitely there was a motherly feeling awakened in her. And although she wanted to kill him by the order of Kamsa, but she, she, the motherly milk automatically and naturally flowed from her. And she gave milk to Krishna, although it was poison. But because she gave milk to Krishna, so Krishna gave her the post of Dhatri or the nurse in the spiritual world. So Krishna's pastime eternally keep going. Sometimes he's a child, sometimes he's a boy, sometimes he's a youth. So in the spiritual world, according to the moods of the Rajabhumi, the Rajvasis in the spiritual world, Puloka, Vrindavan, so he keeps changing. Sometimes he's a boy, and sometimes he's uh, the Tatris or the mothers, they nurse him. So 
So Krishna gave the post of the dhatri or the nurse in the spiritual world to Putana, who actually came to kill him. So is there anybody who else can be more merciful? So somebody has come to kill somebody. And definitely the attempt would be is to dodge off the attempt or to kill in kill the person who is the intruder, who is the attacker. So that would have been, even the law gives a um, shelter. If somebody is killing in defense, it's not considered as a murder. So that is definitely not wrong. So even in the Bhagavad Gita, we hear about Atatai, or one who is aggressive. Somebody who has come to kill with sharp-edged weapons is an aggressor. And you have all the right to kill him. Take action and kill him. So, but Krishna here, so you have the demoness Putana coming there to, just to kill him. But he was, he only saw the intent. He did not see the, the external ephemeral things. So the intent was to give milk. He just took that part. That's why it's called Bhavagrahi Janardana, or one who takes just the attitude or the intent. It doesn't matter if it is some of the contaminations, but he takes a positive side of things and leaves out the negative, negative side. So that is Krishna. He is able to see uh, the positive side of everything. And he took that positive side from Putana as well and give, gave her a wonderful opportunity to nurse him. And although he had to kill her because she, it was the, the, <coughs> the right thing to do. Because he had to kill her because he was sent by Kamsa. And definitely another reason why he, cared, he killed all the demons or the demoness is because he always wanted to keep Kamsa in a suspense. Kamsa did not know who was actually killing all the demons. So he knew that uh, there, is a, there is somebody in, uh, in the Rajabhumi. And he did not know who is that, I mean, who's cat or what is the, who is the child, whether it's a boy or, or a girl. He was not very sure about it because he did not see the child when he was, when he was born. So he, he knew that it was in Rajabhumi. He had a, he had a good uh, guess that it was in Rajabhumi. So he had been sending all the demons. But nobody came back to tell him this is what happened. With everybody who was sent, it was all one sided. They came there, they got killed. So Krishna also did not want to give that opportunity to Kamsa to understand more what is happening. So he wanted to keep him in suspense until he sees him face to face mm -hmm. in the Mathura. So the demoness was killed also. But see the, the mercy that Krishna is able to show. So it says, Aho Bakiyam Stana Kala Kuta. So Kala Kuta means the, the most deadliest of all the poisons. Kala Kuta. So Jigam Shaya Apayat Api Asadi. She mixed that with the milk. And she was no sadhvi. She came as a great sadhvi. Sadhvi means one who is a very pious lady. So she was so very well dressed and she took a form of an, an, a celestial woman. So the, all the Vrajvasis were kind of spellbound. This is not an earthly woman. So she is very special. She has come to see Krishna. She has come to see Krishna and bless him. So nobody opposed her. All the Vrajavasis, they all showed their way. This is Nanda Marasa. Please go, please go. I know you have come to see Krishna. So everybody was showing the way. She had no problems coming to Krishna. Of course, if she had come as a demoness, nobody would have let her come nearby. They would have fought tooth and nail. But she, she had a very, everything was clear for her. She came inside the house and including uh, Yashoda Maya was very bewildered seeing her. She said, oh, she must be some heaven, um, a lady from heavenly planets. Why have you come? Once she said that, oh, I have come to bless Krishna. And if he drinks my milk, he will live for long. So, the order, so there was already some bad omens mm -hmm. before. And somebody had warned that a, a demoness is uh, coming. So she was already very afraid and uh, she was afraid of protection of Krishna. So when, when some other person came, was very um, trustable. So she immediately let her in. So she came as a sadhvi, but she was actually a sadhvi. So leve gatim datri uchitam tonyam. So after killing her, 
she was promoted to the spiritual world that is uh, that is the most unthinkable thing so she came with the intent to kill a, a child how can she go to the spiritual world there is no way so it is a very very dastardly act which is to be condemned and um, it is to be punished but still krishna being krishna so he can do anything he can override override the roots so he sent her to the spiritual world kamva dayalum sharanam brajeh so let me surrender it to him who is such a great such a merciful person so such, that is one great quality of krishna he is the most merciful person so he is not merciful mm-hmm. just to his devotees sometimes he is merciful even to the 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 most opposite side people most unfortunate and uh, unqualified people the next verse is even beautiful so it says that manye shuran bhagavatam triyadashe samarambha magha abhivishta chittan ye samyuge chakshata taksha putram amse sunabhyayudam apatantam so the is saying that actually the demons are more fortunate than the devotees why because they are killed by krishna and when they are killed by krishna they are thinking about him mm-hmm. so they cannot think of anybody else if somebody is coming to kill somebody obviously their whole concentration their whole thinking is how i can kill this person how i cannot get caught and how i can escape from this place they always been thinking on this but uh, the, the last two also they sometimes they forget especially when seeing krishna you see krishna that is an automatic natural attraction for the living entity to krishna so even the demons so they had that even though they are seeing him as enemy mm. but seeing krishna is different so immediately they are kind of they have an, a natural feeling towards him so krishna is an all attractive mm. person krishna means all attractive you can even attract the demons hearts so everybody can change but still they did not they retained that the intent to kill him so but still krishna took that positive side of things and then he sent them to the some of them he gave sayujya mukti or merging into his brahman and some for some like putna he gave the mm-hmm. highest about the spiritual world so in any case they were all delivered from the birth and death cycle so that is important point here so that is krishna krishna is all merciful so that is why they said that uh, <clears throat> so um, whether it is by hook or crook um, yen kien prakarena mana krishna nivesh whether it is with hook or crook some of think about krishna because even as an enemy even as a demon it is still beneficial mm-hmm. so that is what is the beauty so krishna is uh, so merciful and uh, so we continue to hear from uh, uddhava here so the, the previous was also very beautiful was vasudevasya devakyam jato bhojendra vandane चिकीर्षुर भगवान्श्य सं अजेन अभियचिता सो दिस इज ऑलसो ए ब्यूटिफुल वर्स इन विच सो वसुदेव हेड टू वर्ड्स सो वन इज देवकी नदर इज रोहिण सो हिर इट इज सैड उद्धवाद इट इज देवकी सन वॉज बॉर्न एंड वाई डिड ई कम ई वॉन्ट टू डेलीवर हिज फादर एंड मदर फ्रॉम दी the prison house of bojendra mm-hmm. comes up so krishna is the deliverer of everybody so he himself comes to the prison house so we are all in the prison house of this body mm-hmm. this condition of mind and we are suffering under the the aggression of the three modes of material nature we are tossed in the waves of material nature so we are in a very very precarious situation mm-hmm. so krishna is coming into the prison house Mm-hmm. and is so that to deliver us so very interesting con- contrast between uh, if you see lord rama and lord krishna so lord rama was born into an uh, an aristocratic family he was born in a palace and he was coronated he was in the to be king mm-hmm. and uh, so everything was perfect in the beginning but krishna's beginning was all and uh, not so ideal circumstances mm-hmm. he was born into the prison house and he was uh, raised by some other parents his parents did not get that uh, the 
opportunity to raise him and enjoy him with his childish pastimes. And so Krishna later became, come back, came back and then uh, he ruled over Dwaraka and Mathura. But then Lord Rama had a different tone of events. Mm -hmm. So he went into a, he was banished to the forest and he was in the forest for a long, long time. But it is said that uh, Lord Rama's ending was very nice. So he, when he went to the spiritual world, so he went into the, walked into the river and then he disappeared in the river. Mm -hmm. And he took everybody along with him. So everybody who followed him, they all went to the spiritual world. Wow. And whereas Krishna, he left in a very, um, in a very isolated place. Nobody was there around mm -hmm. to to send him off. So it was a, it was a quite a contrast between Lord Rama and Lord Krishna. So his birth and activities. In any case, Krishna shows that uh, the one should always be equanimous. He teaches and he also follows it. Bhagavad Gita, he teaches that and he also follows it throughout his life as Lord Rama, as Lord Krishna also. So all the times he always does perfect things. Everything he does is perfect. <coughs> so Krishna has mainly comes for delivering the, his devotees. So his devotees is his prime focus. So Lord Rama also does that but he is very bound by duties. So he is duty bound. He doesn't break the rules. He follows the rules. Every single moment he follows the rules. So you cannot find a mistake in it. Whereas Lord, Lord Krishna, he, he does not kill Kamsa immediately because he wants to he pacify his parents. He wants to make sure his parents are comfortable. So he does things on his own accord. So nobody has to question him. So that is Supreme Personality of Lord Krishna. So he is completely showing himself as the Supreme Person <laughs> in Krishna's past times. He he bewilders all the people. Sometimes he runs away from the battlefield. Mm -hmm. So all his enemies have come, come together. So we had the king of uh, Magadha, Jadasandha, there was Kavayavana. All of them they came together. They brought all their forces together. They were going to attack Krishna. Just Krishna and Balram. <coughs> Krishna decided to run away from the battlefield. So he did not face them. So well, Lord Rama, he would have faced them, he would have killed them. Mm. But Lord Krishna, he had a different way. He wanted to deliver his devotee, Vichukunda, so who was lying in this uh, cave, was sleeping for ages and ages. Mm. So he didn't want to f kill this uh, lowly person, Kalayavana, who was a Yavana king. So they don't have any good habits. He doesn't deserve to be killed by him. So he decides, sometimes he kills Putana. He's come to kill her, to kill him. But here he did not kill Kalaya mm -hmm. because he he he, had to, he was he deserved to be dying in the hands of Muchukunda. So he had different destiny for him. So like that, Krishna is totally an enigma. You cannot fully predict him. So his actions are very enigmatic, and it is only understood by he every, definitely he has a, a intent behind everything what he does, what he does more than one many times, and he has a purpose behind it. So it requires, Krishna says, my chanma karma chabedivyam eva vyo veti tatpatata. So whoever knows in truth, it's very difficult to understand in truth what are Krishna's activities. So most people are bewildered. Especially his, uh, his Rasa Leela. So everybody is, uh, they want to find fault with Krishna. So that is the, the, so Krishna is always very difficult to understand. It requires the, Acharyas requires great souls to properly enlighten us. We should hear from them and we should give a oral reception to them. And that is when it becomes enlightened in our heart. As Lord Rama is very not difficult to understand. As Lord Krishna is very difficult to understand because he is, he is, he is the Supreme Lord himself. So he always makes that very clear. That if you don't understand me, Bhaktyamam Abhijnanati Yava Echaspi Tatpataka so if you want to understand me in truth, only a devotee can understand. And in the Bhagavad Gita it says that you are Bhaktosi me Saka Cheti. So you are not just my devotee, you are not just my friend, but you are also my devotee. That's why I'm telling you, Arjuna. So to understand Krishna, one has to definitely take shelter of a devotee of Krishna and serve under him and inquire from him submissively. That is the only way to understand Krishna. 
Otherwise, we will all be left in, left confused. <coughs> so, stop here for any questions, any comments. Yes, um, you said one of the reasons he didn't immediately come comes was he didn't want his parents' devotion to be tinged with awe and reverence. But everything he did was awesome, like his whole life. Like, so what's the difference between like the awe and reverence, like the cowherd boys have for Krishna, um, and you know people who aren't Raja Rasis? Because it like this this awe it has to be there. Like you know, it, like here's this ten year old boy who you know throws donkeys up in trees and and kills witches. Like it's amazing. So what's the difference between that awe? Between that awe and what what is what's and the awe and reverence that people who aren't Rajarasis would feel, you know, like like uh, the Yadus and and just people who are less intimate with Krishna, you know, it is tension with that awe and reverence. So like, what's the difference between their awe and reverence and the and the awe that Rajarasis would feel? Yes, that's a very nice, very wonderful question. So the Rajarasis, they're all. <coughs> The inhabitants of the spiritual world. So they are coming in order to assist Krishna's master. Some of them are the they're graduating from the material realm. So they're all getting purified, they did a lot of tapasya, and they all become Rajvasis. But some of them are also coming from the spiritual world. So they have natural love for Krishna. And that love for Krishna is a very tinge of reverence. So even if sometimes Krishna does some superhuman activities, killing some demons and throwing the donkeys and trees, but still he covers them again by his uh, yoga maya potency. They forget it. And they, they know Krishna did all these things, but they don't take it seriously. For them, the att attraction towards Krishna is even prominent, more prominent than his activities. So his, their attraction for him is pure and it is based on their eternal relationship in the spiritual world. Mm -hmm. So they don't take other things seriously. His killing of demons is just a talking point for them. So they, they, that's an opportunity to glorify him. But their most part of their glorification is about his looks, about his, his wonderful behavior, about his childhood pastimes of stealing butter, about his pranks that he plays on the gopis, so that is the most focus for them. So they are not so much focused in, the, in his uh, very chivalrous activities. So that is that is the difference between the the Brajwasis. Whereas the Yadus, so they were more interested in his uh, activities of killing other kings and like fighting with uh, the the Charasanda and so many other killing of the other kings. Is, Diplomacy and his plan is the way he executes things. So that was a talking point for them. Not much about his uh, his relationships. Not much about his wonderful qualities. That focus because they themselves were yadus were most they were kings or they were kshatriyas mostly. Mm -hmm. So they were interested. Everybody has a different aspect that they interested about Krishna. So Rajuvasis, their interest was his his persona, his persona, his characteristics. His uh, sweetness, that was their interest. Whereas the Yadus and the the others, they were interested in this, how he was a very, um, uh, he was a supreme lord, but how his activities were uh, wonderful and uh, how he did different things differently. So that was their talking point, that was their interest. So like they, they think his activities are wonderful, but like they'll think how wonderful it is that he was killing these demons, but the rest of us will just think like how beautiful he was while he was doing it, or you know how how wonderful Krishna is as opposed mm. to the actual action. Yes, they had full faith that Krishna will save them, yeah. and many times they would fight with him. Right? So when they fight with them, they won't think Krishna is a powerful opponent. So they would fight as they would fight with another boy, and uh, the boys would defeat them, and then Krishna would sometimes have to carry them over on their shoulder, on his shoulder. So all these things was uh, happening because they knew Krishna is Krishna is another boy like us. But sometimes the superhuman activities also was there, and sometimes even actually they walked into the the mouth of Agasura, thinking that Krishna would save them. So that was a complete 
they had complete uh, faith in Krishna that he would come and save them. So it is, so it was kind of on the border. So it was they knew his his special activities, but yet they were more attached and they were they reveled in his childhood pastimes. So that is the thing. The gopis are even more ignorant. They didn't really see Krishna doing all those things. The gopas were witness to all those things. So that is another difference. The gopis were even more special. They don't even care about me killing demons. You kill, you don't kill, as long as you're safe and happy. So that is what their interest was. You come back, when you come back, I want to see you. Such a wonderful Krishna is coming back. They will all come to the courtyard, they will see they will see Krishna coming beautifully with a covered voice. So that is what their interest. Killing demons, oh, did it? Did it happen? Oh, okay, all right. Next, what next? They are not really interested much. But Gopas were kind of a little bit of the Sakya Rasa. So they were on the on the little bit of on reverence was there. But the gopis had complete uh, surrender to him. Their only interest was to give him unconditional love. So that is the difference between that's why there's a gradation of devotees. Whereas if you go outside the Vrindavan, there is Yadus and then there is uh, so they had a different relationship, more of a friendly relationship. And uh, but they knew he was Krishna as Supreme God. And but still they had a friendly relationship with him. So there is a lot of different gradations of devotees. So the highest being the gopis. That's why it's, uh, they were not interested in any of the superhuman activities of Krishna. If it was somebody, if the, whereas the queens of the, the Dwarka and Mathura, they were interested. Oh, Krishna did some wonderful things and they wanted to hear more about those things. Whereas the, the Braja Madhus, they were not interested in any of those things. Oh, and I don't ask the question. Oh. Yes, from Vegas. Uh, yeah. Well, wasn't uh, one of the things that Sisupal, before being beheaded, put the, the list of grievances or faults he found in Krishna was that you killed a woman. You killed, which is, you killed Putana. Yeah, mm -hmm. this is forbidden. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, that a woman should never be killed no matter what. Mm -hmm. And actually, Bhumi, when she's being chased by Prithu, Maharaj, she, and he, he's serious. You're going to have to, you know, the whole backstory. He, she, he's going to kill him. She's saying, how can you kill a woman? You if I've done something wrong. So we cut the, you're withholding the food grains to the, to the, my citizens. And you must provide them like that. So he's being, she's being chastised. So that was one of the, the, the first demon he kills, to my knowledge, is a woman. Which is uh, controversial in amongst the. Uh, that is the same case with Lord Rama also. Yeah. So he killed the demons first. And you know, you said like Ram, his life seemed like at the end everything was happy ending. <coughs> Having to send his wife away after retreating because of some whispers in the in the city that how could you know, she not be touched by Radha. He and even though he, it had already been proved, he, he because he was trying to set the perfect example for human society, how a leader should be, that it should be beyond reproach. Whatever you do, whatever the great man does, the common man follows. So he he didn't actually tell her, but he arranged for her to go on a holiday to this ashram and. She was basically exiled to her life place with her two boys. That was not, in my mind, that's not a, you know, it doesn't seem fair. But, but at the end, entering the river, he's going back to her. But yeah, she comes back then, yes. That's true. But well, I don't know if she came back, but he's going to her. Yeah, well, they're all, they all went back together. Yeah. They, so they're together, you know, and I owed you, there's a fight from the planet, but, you know, there was still more uh, for on the, on the human plane or human emotional plane. That was a kind of bittersweet moment. Mm -hmm. Yes. So that's more of uh, showing that duty is, is more important than one's personal interest. Okay. Ram, Lord Rama wanted to show that. that uh, as you said, a king should be beyond reproach, beyond any doubt. And yeah, it's, it's, it's a big debate actually. It's a debating point. 
Anyway, so it was already proved yeah, by. I appreciate what you explained the whole past time. It was already proved that Lord Mother Sita was pure. And uh, why did Lord Rama still go and banish her to the forest? Yeah. It was still a, it's a big debating point. Some things is, is beyond explanation. Yeah. He may have a higher purpose for doing that. Have the, the, his sons brought up in the ashram. There was a whole pastime of uh, Ashwamedha Yajna, the boys capturing the horse and things. Right. So that is a different pastime. So he has his own. And then they sang Ramayana. So both Lava and Kush, so they sang Ramayana. They spread far and wide, and they were known for doing that. So he had a, definitely had a different purpose for doing that. I at least don't, I'm not able to say any, anything about that right now. Maybe we have to research and understand from the other great Acharyas. I just take it for his value. Uh, he's done a separate example. Right. Anybody else? Yes, Prabhupada. Okay, uh, his his higher his higher importance in doing that it could very well be that that because of Kush and Lava chanting his glory and Sita being called back to power then she becomes the greatest heroine because when confronted about the matter she takes that vow that. Uh, if I if I if I've only thought of Ram and no other man, then let the earth open and and can take me away. And so, right before everyone, that happens. And so, in that way, you know, her dignity and uh, chastity, chastity, everything, and, you know, and as a as a heroine, she she takes a vow to just you know leave. Yeah, while 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 uh, while stating that if I've only thought of my Lord Ram, then let the earth open up and consume me, and before everyone it happens and she leaves. So in that way she becomes you know like the greatest heroine, and that you know that that, that you know Ram, you know that, you know do the do the Ram's activities. And then Ram, uh, he becomes even more of a hero because he never takes another wife. And even, uh, you know, for thousands of years, he performs yagas, and he performs those yagas with the deity, golden deity of Mother Sita sitting next to him. Yes. Both extols the great qualities of both husband and wife, Lord Rama and Mother Sita, Mother Sita. It's the highest romantic story there is. But the point still remains that why didn't Lord Rama defend her in front of the public? So, I mm -hmm. mean, when he knows that she's pure and she's already passed the test of fire, why he didn't uh, kind of support and then defend her and let things happen? So, and there's definitely there's, there's a question that goes on eternally. <laughs> and uh, there is. Uh, Answer can only be found by pure devotional service. It well, is revealed. To us. You know, you, we had this point, and but and I'm, I'm, I'm convinced that I did read this. Uh, that and you the other few weeks ago when you said you weren't sure about this, but that person that was criticizing Sita was the first person he killed in the tour. He was a tailor. Mm -hmm. Oh, and you know, he doesn't waste any time with him. Oh. He asks him for clothes and he cuts off his head. Because the man says, no, who do you think you are? This is the king's. He, who, who do you think you are asking for the king's clothes? And he whack, mm -hmm. whacks him with his suicide chakra. And mm -hmm. you know, I, I read it just recently somewhere that, that that his previous life was the person that was whispering to his wife, how could she do you, you read it in the Back to Godhead magazine, it was in the previous magazine to, to this one, it just came out. It was in yeah, the article, yeah. I forget the author, it could have been Chaitanya. Yeah, that's, you, you, and I know I read it, but I, 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 
No, it's an interesting coincidence because I, I had read it, I think, a little bit longer, you know, but that it worked out fine that that magazine just came out to back it up. It's in the back of God's magazine. I see, okay. I'll take a look at it. But it uh, doesn't it's not very convincing to me because it's just a conversation between husband and wife. Lord Rama happened over here. He didn't really go around the town and come on, keep on making a big issue out of it. So Lord Rama did not take an offense to it. So he just thought, okay, his integrity is being questioned. So he didn't, mm -hmm. uh, he didn't really feel that he was being uh, brought down in the public in front of everybody's eyes. So he wanted to uphold his, uh, his position as a Mariada Prashwakamura. He wanted to keep that uh, the integrity intact. So it's more of he took action rather than he was prompted to take action. So mm -hmm. I don't really see a problem there, but still, I mean, I will have to go back and see. I'm, I'm really, I'll have to verify that quote if that's really uh, at, untenable. So I would still like to go and check that personally. Uh, because I don't personally see anything wrong with what that. But he, he, could, he was going around the city to see, you know, what's going on. What people are saying, trying to understand the mood. Of course, he's super soft. But if he thinks that someone is, you know, there's some doubt amongst the center, he he doesn't want any doubt that I'm being duplicit or hypocritical or setting a standard for myself that I'm not setting for everyone else. Mm. And so he wanted to be completely without a speck, not even not like you know, probably could say on the white sheet, just one little pink spot. Right. You know, at Kalyana, when Krishna, Krishna just walked away from Kalyana, Kalyana was running, Krishna right. was walking. Mm -hmm. Cat just took a casual walk. Yeah. And, and Kalyana was saying, stop, stop running away. I'm a <laughs> <laughs> He's just casually walking away. Mm -hmm. Nice, nice discussion. Thank you very much, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.